Welcome to another episode of Ortho Thrive. I'm your host, Richie Gerzon. Today, we're bringing back Marina Domercheva. Marina is the founder and CEO of 3D Predict, a U.S.-based company and dental care provider featuring AI-driven clear aligners. Marina, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Richie. I'm so happy to be back. Yes, I can't wait to talk about today's topic. Um, so last time we talked about the, de- the technical details of AI, we learned all about 3D Predict, of course. But um, since then, it seems like the economy, it's almost assuredly going towards a recession. We might even be in a recession. So I thought we'd talk about specifically um, how we can use technology to serve doctors and help them weather this potential uh, storm that's coming. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Richie. And actually, since ancient times, new technologies have always improved efficiency and profitability Mm. of existing processes like electricity, trains, cars, printing, I mean, book printing or textile industry. And right now, AI or um, modern technology could also help orthodontists to increase efficiency and, of course, profit margins of their practices. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So what are you thinking? How can we do this? What specifically should we be using? Um, so what we do, so at 3D Predict, we create 3D uh, plans, two small plans based on roots and bone, and we use a machine learning and AI to do it. Yeah. And uh, so we've been doing it for five years already. And uh, what uh, does it mean for doctors? So it, our technology allows them to reduce the number of refinements to save chair time, significantly save chair time. And at the end of the day, it increases profitability by 67%. And it's really very important for them, especially right now. So I just can uh, tell more about how like these numbers and how you know to track um, yes. revenue per each. Because that's 67% percent. is a... That is a big claim. I would like to dig more into that. How are you coming up with this figure? Because that would make a huge difference for someone if they're not using AI in their practice right now. Yeah, for sure, I'll be happy to. Um, So first of all, if you are talking about profitability of orthodontic treatment, uh, there are several components which uh, has significant impact on that. First of all, lab fee. Uh, so doctors have to pay for braces or for aligners. Um, I just uh, want to talk about like average case, for example, class sure. two patient, doctor, orthodontists see like class two patients every day. Uh, for example, patients who require, uh, which require two or three millimeter distillation. So how doctors would treat these patients? So they would, they would buy our, uh, aligners or braces. So it's a lab fee. In order to achieve uh, two or three millimeter distillation, they will also pay for additional appliances for distillation, sure. uh, additional like $200 on average. You know, you could buy like a uh, uh, cheaper one or branded one, but still, you know, you just pay a little bit more. And uh, our technology, root and based treatment planning, allows doctors to achieve. Uh, up to three millimeter distillation without additional appliances. Wow. So starting on the lab uh, fees, they already save money, which they have to spend on additional appliances for distillation. Um, why uh, we allow doctors to achieve three millimeter distillation without additional appliances? Just because we trained our algorithms on root and bone treatment planning. So uh, we have thousands of patients for which we know exactly the maxillary sinus location. We know how to combine different types of movements, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah. at the end of the day, it allows doctors to achieve up to three millimeter distillation without additional appliances. Uh, so it's one component which uh, affects profitability. I mean, and that's a second- pretty big component. I'm kind of mentally rudimentary doing the math in my head. I'm like, that's at least 30% probably because you're up to, you know, the lab fee and the $200 for the appliance. Yeah. It's a significant yeah, I- savings right there. Yeah, I agree. So usually like doc- on average, you know, doctors charge, for example, $6,000 per treatment. So yeah. they pay for braces and additional appliances, or they pay uh, $1,500 for aligners, and these additional appliances, like an average lab fee for aligners. 
Uh, and then the second component is patient visits. And actually it's one of the key operating metric is to track the revenue generated by each patient visit because it's really very important. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, very, it's more straightforward to track revenue generated by each patient visit if you do like root canals or cavities, you know, in general dentistry. Yes, yeah, by yeah, but by in orthodontic treatment, it's not that straightforward. So it's very important to do this math. And it's one of the key operating metrics uh, just to track the revenue per each patient visit. And uh, so, and uh, like at the end of the day, it's all about chair time. Uh, so with our technology, doctors say, uh, spend less time on 3D plan approval. Like it's the first component. And Usually doctors, orthodontists review and approve 3D plans. Uh, for example, their assistants can do attachments or scanning, but only clinician could approve 3D plan and yes. uh, yeah, chair time, time of uh, the orthodontist is the most expensive chair time in the orthodontic of course, office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and if, if, even if you're talking about AI, machine learning, technology can never replace doctor. So it's very important. We just a tool for doctors. So doctors um, have 100% control over the treatment. And it's important for clinician to review and approve 3D plan. So with our technology, we create like more clinically valid 3D plan. Mm. And we've done study on 5,000 cases, which were submitted by orthodontists. And Forty-eight percent of them were approved from the first iteration, just because of machine learning and our technology. The first video plan, which they get, it's clinically valid. They don't have to do it back and forth, and like you know, send comments to technicians, get plan back, mm. and then uh, so they yeah. So it's almost see, I've come from a manufacturing background, so it's almost like you're saving rework. You're getting it done right the first time. That makes yeah. that rework is always the most expensive thing if you're. You know, I've been trained in Lean Six Sigma, so you're always trying to look to get rid of lean, get rid of rework, be as lean as possible, and uh, that makes a huge difference. Um, do you have an idea statistically, like um, before AI, what the uh, chair time was, and like ten years ago versus what it can be now? Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's all about like a chair time and uh, predictability of the treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, so because of our technology, we reduce the number of refinements. And um, like uh, if you compare 3D predict aligners and like other aligners, if you're talking about complex patients, we're not talking yes. about like mild cases, just aesthetic uh, movement of social six. So for like complex patients, it's usually uh, for like our major competitors, it's uh, doctors usually require 2.5 uh, 2.5 refinements per patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, our technology allows doctors to have 0.7 refinements per patient. So uh, only 70% of 3D patients require refinements. Of course, we cannot control compliance, uh, course, but yeah. what we can control is the predictability of the treatment. It, what does it mean? That if you have to order the, refine, uh, the refinement, you have to invite patient to the dental office to do scanning, then bond new attachments. And so it increases the amount of uh, patient visits and uh, per patient uh, with 3D predict doctors need six less uh, patient visits so with other aligners uh, doctors would schedule six additional appointments per patient because of refinements and mm -hmm. yeah it's and it's all about chair time it I was um, I was wondering if someone wanted it expand through say we're having a recession you want to expand through a recession you want to open another office you could probably plan on having less staff knowing that you have this efficiency in place because you just don't have as many appointments right yeah yeah correct um uh, so yeah uh, it 
if you have less appointments per patient, so uh, on average, for example, the like cost per appointment will be two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. And so it means that you could save uh, more than one thousand dollars per patient. And in um, on average, if orthodontist orders eight um, a line of patient per month or like 100 patients per year it means that you could save more than one hundred thousand dollars a year save or earn when uh, uh, hmm. uh which word would you prefer you know you could save or earn more like more than one hundred thousand dollars per year just by reducing the number of uh appointments uh and again it's very important to track revenue per appointment per visit and uh as you mentioned if you um uh, save time if you save chair time you could all open up uh, schedule to see new patients. Because for example, today, if I call orthodontic office here in New York, maybe I'll have an appointment in August or in September, I'm not sure. Yes, yeah. so, and um, like if doctors spend less chair time, they could earn more. So they increase their profitability. And second, they could grow their revenue. They could grow their practice. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm a marketing guy. So if you're going to save a hundred K, give me the hundred K so I can grow <laughs> your practice. And then you're going to save more and make more at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I'm exactly. also thinking if you have less, if you have less chair time, you really could reach out to a wider demographic. Your radius of patients could be larger because people would be willing to drive for a longer period of time if they're going to come to the office less, if, you know, if they really like you and you have a if you really differentiate yourself, they might, people be more willing to make that longer trip. So uh, that makes a huge difference. Say if you're advertising, obviously, if we could reach a, um, more people with the ad, it makes it work a lot better. A great point. I have never thought about it, but yeah, as a marketing guy, you have great ideas. Thank you. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's especially helpful in like a rural area, you know, they are people already are willing to drive. So it's kind of, I, even myself, I live 30 minutes from the office because I like living in a rural part of town. And if I had a chiropractor who's about 45 minutes, 50 minutes away and I've changed chiropractors. You know, I loved him because someone was closer, but if he told me if there was some magical way that he could say, well, I could cut your visits in half, I would have stayed with him, you know, because I would have, oh, I could do that drive every whatever amount of months as opposed to every single month, you know, it really would have made a difference because I loved him, but it was just too much. It was like an hour and a half of driving every month. It was like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, but yeah I think that definitely could work. Are there any other ways that 3d predict can help with differentiation because i talk about that a lot you know i think one of the biggest uh, issues that orthodontists need that are facing is just becoming commodities that commoditization that's happening in the industry so we really have to focus on differentiating every single practice some way why are people choosing you versus the competitor especially in an economic turndown you know that's really the weak frankly, are going to go away because they're going to suffer. And the people that are, have all their ducks in a row are going to actually thrive. It seems to be how it works. So how can we help doctors differentiate their practices right now? If they're not really sure how they can in a real meaningful way. It's a great question, uh, Richie. And uh, you're absolutely right. Right now, a line of treatment is a commodity just because the printing is a commodity right now. Uh, a line like plastic is a commodity and uh, patients see a lot of ads that they could align their teeth even without a doctor you know mm -hmm. they could do it themselves and of course they do not see the difference because they're not dentists they're not clinicians and for example with uh, our technology uh, doctors could incorporate roots and bone into the treatment planning they could utilize cbct and th this is how they could differentiate their practice uh, they could show their patients how they're going to treat them in a more efficient, but also important in a safe way, mm -hmm. how they could achieve better clinical outcomes. And as orthodontists, it's very important for them, you know, to differentiate from 
do it yourself aligners and you know maybe from general dentist across the corner just for them to educate their patient that they are clinicians uh they are orthodontists they review 3d plants and they incorporate roots and bone into it and this allows them to uh this is how they differentiate the different clinically and um it's it's very important you know not to convert practice into commodity uh, but also some doctors they do not some orthodontists do not have cbct in their offices uh, but still they benefit from our technology because we uh, trained our algorithms on thousands of patients with roots and bone yeah. and right now we apply the same algorithm the same tooth movement staging to uh, patients without cbct and again, doctors could differentiate uh, themselves that they could do, I don't know, like treat. Most of their patients are class two. Most of teenagers have class two uh, malocclusion. Uh, so they could achieve, you know, uh, they could treat them without rubber bands. And um, if, if you are back, you know, to the real world, uh, patients are not compliant with rubber bands, unfortunately. We want yes. them to be compliant. They tell you that they're compliant but unfortunately they are not uh, without additional appliances so yeah so they could uh, the orthodontist could use technology machine learning technology to treat patients in a more predictable way and i think it's predictable efficient and safe it's also very important uh, and i think it's uh, it's crucial you know to differentiate practice and not to become you know a commodity and this Especially, I think it's important to educate patients because I'm so sorry for patients when they do it, uh, when they do uh, do it yourself treatment. Yes. Um, so that so really is the, that's the enemy of really all orthodontists right now are those do it yourself options. And a lot of it does, I think, involve educating the public because just from the keyword research, I mean, people are still look, searching for braces when they mean aligners. They, a lot of people really, we forget how little the general public knows about the industry. So we really have to educate them. And you probably, if you, if root and bone is important, you probably could do like a doctor who potentially could do like a short little webinar series as an ad, bring the public in, learn from the doctor why this is important, then establish themselves as a resource, get the lead and then follow up with them. That probably could be a really good campaign in and, of, in and of itself just so people started to understand why this matters because we have to teach people otherwise you know they're going to be their tendency will be to price shop if we don't you know we have to show them why we're the best option yeah rich is actually a great idea and uh some of our customers they actually record they don't do webinars i think it's a great idea but what they do right now they record the treatment plan the study plan how to start moving in, inside the bone, how roots mm. are moving, and they send this short video to patients, to parents, and to patients. Yeah. And they explain why why they're going to move teeth uh, that way, why it would take uh, like 20 steps to 30 steps, and uh, what they're going to do to make it safe and efficient. And it really helps, you know, to educate um, patients and also patients maybe feel more confident uh, in this doctor. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be a really, you could do a testimonial of the patient with a combination of some of that footage with their permission. And that would be very powerful, I think, for people. Because yeah. yeah, it's a good idea. Okay. And actually, uh, I'm a like medical doctor by training, and I specialize in infectious disease and vaccination. Yeah. So in infectious disease, they had it before, like 20, 30 years ago, uh, antibiotics to be used without prescription, without like doctor supervision. And really? I didn't know that. Oh, a God. lot, a lot. And it was a huge problem. Like 10, 15 years ago, we had a huge problem globally, huge antibiotic resistance, just because... Uh, patients used antibiotics when they uh, there was no need. Uh, they used uh, wrong antibiotics, and like ten years ago, it was a huge problem. Yes, um, I remember that. Some people talking about that. I'm sure I'm one of the victims of that. I had asthma really badly as a child, and they gave me antibiotics immediately as soon as I had anything because they didn't want it to get to my lungs. So I've had yeah. many, many rounds of antibiotics in my life. 
Yes, so so sorry. And the same with uh, like unsupervised dental care or don't you care yes. uh, when patients treat themselves is the same like if they would use antibiotics for asthma or for pneumonia, for example. Yep. And um, at the end of the day, we could have the same negative outcomes. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah I think that would be a good message to tell people. I'm yeah, sure the so AEO medical- is helping this, you know, t- give that message to the public because that's uh, definitely in their best interest yeah and as a medical doctor i think that ai will never replace uh clinician because nothing will ever replace you know uh consult or like medical examination or radiological images etc etc so um like we developed the technology which allows doctors to achieve predictable outcomes really good patient outcome comes safe and efficient and save money at the end of the day, increase their profitability. Um, but still the doctor is the king, you know, in the treatment. So yes. doctors, yeah, this, they tell us what they want to achieve at the end of the treatment and they review and approve 3D plans. Uh, so it, it's really very important. And that's how they could really different differentiate differentiate their practice not to convert practice into commodity absolutely so is there any other ways you think technology can help uh, a practice whether an economic turndown um first of all they could achieve really good patient outcomes and i think it's important because yes. um e- even though we have a lot of digital channels um word of mouth is still important Oh, it's so still the pay- best. Yeah, it always yeah. will be. Yeah. Uh, and so if patient achieves really good pay- uh, outcomes, for sure, his, I don't know, sisters, brothers, or no uh, classmates will come to the same mm. doctor. So Absolutely. it's, yeah. And then reduce chair time and reduce chair time without compromising the uh, patient outcomes. It's very important. And uh, yeah, and also differentiate the practice. I don't know which technology will evolve in like in 10 years of like five years, but even like, I think in 10 years, AI will be a commodity, something uh, new will appear and we, we always track because yes, the technological company, yeah, our like key competencies in software, but we always track what's new, what's new on the market. Maybe in 10 years, it'll be a commodity. Like right now, 3D printing is a commodity. And that's, like, that I makes know. sense. Yeah. Well, but that's why it's so important to take advantage of it right now, because if competition is going to get stiffer, if people are going to be price shopping more, we have to, we have a chance to use technology to be really innovative and differentiate mm-hmm. the practice, mm-hmm. make it better. And without compromising outcome, I think that's a super important point. Because it's, if you're a lot of times, you know, you're more profitable for a company, it equals a bet, a worse service or product as a result, you know, and it's really a game of, well, how bad can we make the product or service and not lose customers and get maximized profit margin? And obviously we don't want to do that, but you see that everywhere. So it's really nice to hear that we can kind of get, you know, we're going to have our cake and eat it too, really, because we can make, get more profit and the outcomes can be better. I think that's so yeah. important to have that combination. Absolutely. And uh, the patient outcomes is very important for, uh, for orthodontists. So um, uh, that's why they still use braces for 70% of their patients mm. because they cannot achieve the same good clinical outcomes with other aligners. And there was a recent study, market study by market research by Morgan Stanley. And in 2021, orthodontists in the US, uh, orthodontists use braces for 70% of their patients. Wow. Uh, even surprising though, like, because none of my clients are in that category. I was a very innovative yeah. client. <laughs> yeah. And global, it's like 85%, you know. Uh, but still, just because they want to achieve really good patient outcomes, they use braces. Sense. Yeah, and for, it's not it's not all about compliance because, uh, of course, some patients are not compliant. You would use only braces for them, but it's not seventy percent. Mm. And w- what uh, doctors could achieve is uh, our technology. They could achieve uncompromised clinical outcomes for those patients who do not want braces. Uh, for different reasons. And also at the same time, uh, doctors could increase their 
profit margins because the revenue generated by each patient visit with braces is like is minimum just because you have these braces you have to see patients every six weeks ah, i see um, yeah so that kind of erases the benefit of not having yeah. a lab fee is that sort yeah. of the argument there yeah yeah and it's, it's actually it's very complicated metric you know to track and i talked to a couple of uh, uh, customers so they told me that if uh, treatment is longer than 22 months they are losing money on braces just because of this metric the track revenue generated by yes. each patient visit and they told me now if it's like more than two years uh, uh, my profit margins are negative wow really i wonder how many patient management systems automatically track this metric for you you should, uh, I don't know, maybe you should have the system in place in your office. Uh, yeah, it'd be maybe pretty easy to do an Excel sheet of it, but it'd be nice just to see it, you know. But somebody needs, you know, to fill in this Excel spreadsheet, you know, it's oh, all gosh, about yeah. discipline. Yeah, like your, you should train your assistant or student coordinator or office manager, you know, just to track it and compare between different systems. Uh, between different devices, but usually uh, it's easy, you know, just to get your annual revenue, divide by number of appointments, and that's it. But oh, it's to get not, a big yeah. overall average, but then you yeah. can't kind of slice it down into different. It's treatments. like average temperature in the hospital, you know. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> All right. I mean, I think this is a really good advice for someone who's thinking of ways to help them weather potentially what's happening. I mean, I know all small businesses, including myself, we're thinking of ways to make sure we're all going to make it through what's happening in the next, who knows, few years. Anything could happen, but either way, if we're wrong and the economy is a booming, we're just going to be that much better off by making these changes. Yeah, I agree. Well, Marina, thanks for being on the show again. It's great seeing you and I uh, uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you, Richard. Thank you so much. In a recession, the weak practices are going to have a hard time and may even disappear. The strong practices are going to get everyone else's customers that the weak had left behind. And today, Marina showed us how we can increase profitability, be more efficient, and not compromise on outcome. If you can do all three of those things with your practice, you're going to be in a much stronger position no matter what's going on with the economy. If you want to be a guest on the show, you can go to orthothrive.com. You can reach out to me personally at richard at orthosalesengine.com. Keep grinding, keep thriving, and I'll see you next time.